Oh, right, YouTubers, welcome back to War Thunder Ground Forces with the Angry Nerd. And today I thought we would take a look at the much anticipated Nash Horn. Now, before we get started, I'd like to bring your attention to the skin that's on this vehicle. It was created by Tiger Six. And I will provide a link down in the video description so that you can go over to his LiveWarThunder.com profile and find this skin and many other wonderful skins. Now the German Nashorn was originally named the Hornesse. Hope I pronounced that right. German for Hornet. It was a German tank destroyer used in World War II. After the first German combat experiences with the newer Soviet tanks like the T-34 and the KV-1 during Operation Barbarossa, the need for more powerful vehicles became apparent and the production of newer tanks like the Tiger and the Panther would take some time. However, a tank hunter or Panzerjäger capable of destroying these more heavily armored tanks could be developed more quickly. The Hornet was developed as an interim solution in February 1942 by Alket Arms Firm of Berlin. They used their recently developed Geschultz Wagon 3-4, which used components of both the Panzer III and the Panzer IV tanks. The 88mm Pac 43-1 L-71 long-barreled anti-tank gun, later more famously known as the main armament of the Tiger II, was mounted on the rear of the chassis complete with its gun shield. An open-topped superstructure was built up around the gun to give the crew some added protection. The amount of armor provided for the crew compartment was limited. The shielding provided was adequate to protect the crew from blast and small arms, but not armor-piercing rounds. Thus, like the Martyr series of weapons, the vehicle was not intended to engage in tank fights, but to provide mobility to an excellent anti-tank gun. The gun had the same traverse and elevation as it had on its carriage, 15 degrees, to either side and between negative 5 and plus 15 elevation. To accommodate the long and heavy gun, the hull had to be lengthened and the engine moved from the rear to the center of the chassis. This model was presented to Adolf Hitler for his approval in October 1942 and entered production in early 1943. During the first half of 1943, a new model of the Hornet was introduced into production. This model altered the driver's front armor plate along with some other minor differences. This model and its predecessor, the few early production vehicles, were almost indistinguishable. The Hornet made its debut during the Battle of Kursk, where they performed well on the open flat landscapes in this area of Russia. The Hornet was renamed Nashorn, German for rhinoceros, by Hitler in 1944. Because the Nashorn was only lightly armored and displayed a high profile, a new generation of tank destroyers with a lower profile and better armor, like the Jagdpanzer IV, Panzerjäger V, and Jagdpanther, began to be favored by the German army. However, the Nashorn's gun, a variant of the Pac-43, was one of the most effective anti-tank guns deployed during the war. Its tungsten carbide core round, the PZGR-40-43, was capable of penetrating 190 millimeters of rolled steel armor at a 30 degree angle of impact at a distance of 1,000 meters. This gave it the ability to frontally penetrate any allied tank at long range, and its relatively low cost and superior mobility to heavier vehicles ensured it remained in production until 1945, 
with a total of 494 vehicles being produced before war's end. Now in War Thunder, the Nashorn is a rank 3 with a battle rating of 5.3. It has a 426 horsepower engine propelling the 23.5 ton vehicle to a top speed of 27 miles per hour. It comes equipped with an 88 millimeter PAC 43 cannon and with a maxed out crew you can achieve a reload rate of 9.1 seconds. So what do I think of the Nashorn here in War Thunder? Well, I have mixed feelings. It's, it's a pretty good vehicle and the gun on it is very good. But, um, I think I prefer the Dicker Max over the Nashorn and the reason for that is um, the Dicker Max has more armor and a lower battle rating. The Dicker Max is a battle rating 4.3. The Nashorn is a battle rating 5.3. The Dicker Max has a gun depression of negative 15, and the Nashorn only has a negative 5, which means the Dicker Max is a little more versatile in where you can position to get the shots. You don't have to crest up on a hill quite as much. And with the battle rating 5.3, you can see. Um, 6.3 vehicles and the Nashorn does not hold up so well against some of those vehicles. So the Nashorn is not bad, it's just not as good as the Dicker Max. So that's my comparison. And that's why I don't have the Nashorn completely uh, spaded out yet. I haven't been playing it quite that much. But why don't we hop into the game and see what I was able to do with the Nashorn. Here we go. Okay, looks like we picked up Kuban. So we are in the northeastern section. Um, I had a good spot that I used with the Dicker Max. I think I'm gonna head up on top of the hill. And, uh, See if the Nashorn can also pull it off from there. All right, here we go. Now the Nashorn is a little more mobile than the Dicker Max, but I think those, I can stand to take a little bit longer to get into position. So we're gonna come right up this hill to the left here. I'm gonna pull in front of this tree and then back up over it. So I don't want it to fall in front of me. Let's see. Now, everybody can see you when you crest up on this hill, so you can't stay up here too long. There we go. Now, with the Dicker Max, you don't have to get up on top of that ridge. You can just nose your nose up and get some of these shots, but... So I'm having to get a little bit further up. That'll do. See, the gun is really good. Has a nice trajectory on that shell. I don't know how much they're gonna let me, how much longer they're gonna let me stay up here. Oh, I should have snapped that off. 
Oh, I saw some machine gun fire come by. So I am going to reposition. Come right around this little edge here. I'm going to back up this hill until I can get a shot. There we go. Oh! Woo! See that round? That round hit the rock and then mess my gun up. So, I'm out of the way. I'll repair. At least it didn't take my crew out. It did wound somebody. Wounded the officer in the back, but nobody wants to listen to him anyway. He doesn't know what he's doing. The NCOs that are running it anyway. No offense to any officers that are listening. Dang it. Stay right there. Come on. There we go. Okay, run away before they get another shot off, finally. That was pretty lucky there. Is that a Dicker Max? Oh, I messed up one of his crew members. I think somebody just tried to bomb me. There we go. Reload in safety. And when you're in vehicles, holy moly. Dang it. And those airplanes. I mean, my dudes are just standing right out there in the open. They done started a forest fire. Fire still burning back there. Not quite there. All right. We'll just pull out of the line of sight for a minute, just to break sight. I'll come back and look again. So 
somebody took a shot at me. I hit that dicker max, but I didn't kill it. Okay, got another hit. Just get one center mass, I might knock one of these vehicles out. Dang it! Another plane! I'm stuck out here repairing. Well, that Panzer IV didn't like that. Come on, come on. Reload. Reload. Before I get knocked out here. Repair. It is cupola. Oh, man. My weapon reload is a lot longer. Three crew members out. Double going planes. There we go. Finally got the Dicker Max. Almost reloaded. There we go. Oh, what's that? Ah! That was bad. Tried to rush that shot too much. Come on. There we go. Another Dicker Max. Oh no. Bombs. Run, 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 run. Dang planes, man. Leave me alone. I mean, I, mean, I would do the same thing. Uh, the people who are flying these planes know that this and the Dicker Max and uh, some of these other vehicles are open-topped vehicles. And uh, they will target you. Oh, dang it. Oh. And a plane killed me. Good gosh. Oh well, game ended. All right, so let's see what we did. Okay, we got the first strike, Shadow Strike Streak, Adamant, One Shot, Tank Rescuer, Professional, and Sniper. Uh, we knocked out seven vehicles, seven critical hits. Not too bad. First place in the team. 17,269 Silver Lions. There we are. We got killed at the very last moment.
Okay. Let's save it. Alrighty, so yeah, the Nashorn. Um, as you could see by that game, I think I got attacked uh, from the air, what, like four times? So you will get targeted in this open top vehicle, but you'll also get targeted in, in the Dicker Max. Anything, because those fighters uh, can kill your crew uh, with their machine guns. So. Yeah, they're going to target you once they've knocked the bomber out and some of them will target you even instead of trying to shoot down a bomber. So, yeah, the gun is really good. It's a large vehicle. Um, can't take too much of a pounding. Uh, don't stay out in the open while you're reloading. Fire, hide. Fire, hide reposition when you start taking some fire so yeah hey uh, I wanted to uh, remind you if you're watching this vehicle and you haven't subscribed to my channel I am going to be giving away an M10 Achilles starter pack when I reach 5,000 subscribers so there'll be a link in the description section um, of the video for that there's also links to my Facebook page my Twitter account and my twitch account although I don't twitch very often so don't look don't look for me on twitch really because I, I just don't have time to do it but if you've liked this look at the Nash horn hit that like button if you'd like to see some more War Thunder from the Angry Nerd, why don't you go ahead and subscribe? It really helps the channel. But as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Nerd out.